we also discovered something really really worrying basically it looks like our chain is breaking hi i'm lavi and i'm ollie and this is our hero bumblebee together we are attempting a guinness world record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by, by motorcycle. motorcycle join us for season three here in south america Goodbye, most beautiful place with mountain views. Good morning, world. Welcome back to the channel. It's day number 278 on our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the small town of Cholila in Argentina and it's a beautiful day and it's been a really beautiful stay here actually. I mean this town is like nestled in between all of these massive mountains all around. They even have their own mini mountain in the town. <laughs> Very cool. And the hostel we stayed at is called Piyuki Mapu. That means heart of the earth apparently the hostel owner told us. But now we're ready to hit the road so let me show you guys where we're heading today. So we are here in Cholila and today we're going to be heading up on the 258 through El Bolson and up to San Carlos de Bariloche before heading round Lake Nahuel Huapi up through here to join back up with the route of 40 and continue our way north. Yes, our aim is it to reach Santiago in four days and it's a long way to go. So better hit the road, let's go. But apart from being in an amazingly beautiful location, this town's actually famous for another reason, and that is that it was the home of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids. Which sounds pretty crazy. So the story goes that in the late 1800s, uh, Butch Cassidy's gang, the Wild Bunch, which was in the USA, was in decline. They were sort of being cornered by uh, all the sheriffs and they were being sort of pushed out. So Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and his partner actually left the USA and took a boat to Buenos Aires, where they basically made their way to Cholila. And here they actually built a cabin and had a lot of land and they had cows and they basically just chilled out here. But that didn't last very long because they ended up apparently robbing a bank in Rio Galejos and then eventually they were found and they had to flee even further and crossed over into Chile and eventually Bolivia where they both were actually killed in the end. But it was here in Cholila that they spent quite a few years basically just living the quiet life. A real gangster town here. <laughs> yeah, and apparently when the sheriff came here or the uh, detective came here to investigate where they were, he liked the town so much that he actually stayed here as well. And his descendants are still living in Cholila today. <laughs> cool. So it is really cool because the cabin that they built, that Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid lived in, is still here in town. And uh, that's actually our first stop today. We're heading to this little cabin to see a little bit of Cholila history. So it's somewhere down this little lane. Just saw a sign saying Butch Cassidy Cabana. Ah, I think this is it up ahead. <laughs> nice. Opa. Wow, do you think we can go inside? I think you can go inside. That's cool. Look at this. Butch Cassidy. This way. Cool. Cool. Look at this. I want to go inside. You're going to go inside. So apparently this cabin 
is built in a traditional Wild West style or Old American West style. It's basically like a log cabin and it's actually even got wooden roof. How cool is that? Oh look, maybe we can go through here. Oh yeah, let's go through the window. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Wow. Nice. It's crazy that this place is still standing after all this time, hey? I mean, they came here in like, at the beginning of the 1900s, 1901 or two or three. And actually it was right here that Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid and his partner lived. Wow. Crazy, they were actually here. They counted their money. Must have been quite nice for them for a little bit, hey? <laughs> the gangster life in America and then coming here, insane. And you can see here on the wood how they actually used axes to plane the wood. So it's really like handmade this place. Wow. So cool. I'm going out this window. <laughs> okay, this one's not doing so good. This must have been their barn. It's really interesting when you come to a place that's so intertwined with history and, and legend. Really cool. Whoa, look over here. There's a whole load of cow skulls. I think that might be a guanaco. Oh, yeah. Crazy, these might have been Butch Cassidy's cows. <laughs> this is actually the same route that Butch Cassidy took after he left that cabin in Cholila. So he headed up through El Bolson and up to this lake which is coming up in this national park which is called Lake Nahuel Huapi. And then he took a boat across the lake and into Chile. Cool. So we're sort of basically following on this historic Butch Cassidy route today. Yeah, but it takes us maybe three hours and him it would have took him probably three days. <laughs> well, you don't think they had this tarmac down in 1901? <laughs> wow, crazy. There must have been a massive forest fire here because this entire section here is totally black. Yeah, and in the front as well. Oh, yeah, and up here, look at this. Yeah, wow. Wow, suddenly it went from like green to just totally barren. And we saw blackened trees in some of the towns that we've passed through so far. So yeah, I guess they've had a lot of forest fires and some really big ones as well. Look down here, this entire valley. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. So we're just stopping here for our lunch break. And uh, look at where we are now. <laughs> Can I get up on the rock? Ah, nice. Look at this lake. Absolutely spectacular. Basically just stopped at a... Oh, there you are. <laughs> I was like, where's Lavi gone? <laughs> Basically just stopped at this lay-by on the side of the road. Just to have a little bit of a break and eat something. What have we got? The best lunch ever. Because we had a really, really nice friend at the hostel where we stayed at. Her name is Tata and she yesterday made us some empanadas. Hi Tata, thank Hi, you Tata. Oh, I love you. <laughs> yeah, we already had one of these yesterday and she is so good at making empanadas. I mean, she is Argentinian, so. I mean, hello. And we found a really cool meat substitute as well. She put in there, so it's like a mince. A mince empanada. Yeah, with this like soy protein mince. Oh, it looks so, so nice. Look at this. <laughs> mm. Mm. I love it. But whilst we were at the hostel, we also discovered something really, really uh, worrying. Normally the chain has this little metal gasket ring, this little roller in the middle. 
and uh, when we were at the hostel we were giving the chain a bit of a clean and oil and we found out that at least three or four or maybe even five are missing this roller so this one this one this one this one and this one there's like no roller there anymore it's just the metal in between oh yeah there's one here as well yeah, yeah so basically it looks like our chain is breaking we had a look online to see how serious that was and of course the advice is get that changed as soon as possible so we contacted some garages in Santiago which is our next major place we organized a new chain and sprocket set and organized as well some new tires <laughs> because look at these tires now this is now 15,000 miles on these Dunlop Trail Max Mission tires and the tread has gone down to probably uh, one or two mil now. We're definitely getting to the end, end, end. So yeah, in Santiago, we're gonna have a full service, oil change, oil filter change, new chain and sprocket set and a new tire. Yeah. And I think this is really necessary for us to do, hey? Definitely just important now that we make it for another 1600 kilometers to get there yeah we're aiming to do this ride in the next four days from here to santiago it's around 250 miles a day and we're going to take it quite nice and easy ride at about 50 55 miles an hour hope for the best come on bumblebee 1,000 miles more to go. All right, coming into the beautiful lake town of San Carlos de Bariloche. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if that was pronounced correctly, but... It sounded correctly. <laughs> so this town has a population of 100,000 people, and it's uh, just a major center in this area for trekking, for... Mountaineering. For skiing. Boating. Oh, is there some money here? Where? Oh yeah, there's a thousand. Wait. <laughs> no way. A thousand on the ground. How much was it? Two thousand. Two thousand? No way. Yes. Rich. <laughs> That's like uh, 20 pounds. No, 10 pounds. 10 pounds. 10 pounds? Can't go wrong with that. So this is the lake that this town is situated on. Uh, the Nahuel Huapi Lake and that gives his name to the national park as well the Nahuel Huapi National Park and actually this national park is the oldest national park in Argentina yes it was established in 1934 it's the biggest national park here in this region as well yeah it incorporates the high Andes mountains as well as the rainforest lowlands and also the Patagonian steppe so now we're leaving Bariloche after a, a short <laughs> whirlwind ride around. We yeah. tried to find the cathedral, but we were beaten by the one-way systems. <laughs> and we went around a couple of times, but man, could not find our way. It was like, it's there, but you had to play Tetris and you were like kind of going up and across and back and then, oh, we missed it. Oh, okay, nope, forget it. Because we have Nikos waiting for us a couple of miles up the road. You know, for those who are wondering, where Nikos went because we were traveling with him for like six days um, he actually stayed at the hostel with us for a couple of days and then he made his way to here to Bariloche to do a little bit with his motorcycle so he made his way up here and now he's at a free camp and probably he will join us all the way until Santiago should be a quite nice ride oh yeah oh no okay now um, I will jump off and you can do it, yeah? It does look a little bit dodgy. So basically, Nikos is down here by the river where he's been wild camping. And we're going to go and see him now. But I didn't realize he was down like this crazy little road. All right, let's do it. Aha, there he is. There he is. Ah. Hola. Oi. To the main. See. This way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
there's his camp. Whew. Oh, that was a pretty dodgy way in. Nice, look at this setup. Wow. Oh, he's put himself right next to the river here. Oh. Beautiful. Okay, you wouldn't believe it, but Nikos's battery is dead again. He stayed here for two days and now his battery's gone. Okay. Okay. Okay, ready? Ready? Okay, go. <coughs> Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, you can start walking. I'll be there. Unless I fall off. Would have been nice to camp here though, but uh I've got to make a bit more distance. Let's make our way back to the road then. Oh man, this bit was pretty tough to climb up this hill and round the corner. Whew, Jesus. <clears throat> okay. There he goes. <laughs> Thank you. My number one fan there. Okay. But Nikos almost fell off just there. Yeah, just now. Yeah, just going up and over that hill. His back tire slid out and he had to like put his hand feet on the ground. Oh man, that would have done me. There we go, back on the roads, us and Nikos, rocking it here in Argentina. <laughs> so we've entered now the Nahuel Huapi National Park and in front of us is Lake Nahuel Huapi. Woo! And this part of the route to 40 is just stunning. I can see the road going around the lake here. Beautiful. It's just the combo, lakes and mountains and you're just like... Yes, baby. Yes, I'm right baby. here. <laughs> yes. And an interesting thing about this lake is actually that they have their very own Loch Ness monster. <laughs> it's true, it's true. The monster is called Nahuelito and it's pretty much the same kind of idea as the Loch Ness monster, like a pliosaur or some sort of sea serpent uh, living in this lake right here. But actually, this legend actually predates Loch Ness and Nessie. So this legend has been around even longer than our Scottish legend. <laughs> and there's been a lot of reports of people seeing Nahuelito. So guys, keep your eyes peeled for us. Uh, because apparently we're not very good at spotting things. Do you remember when we were trying to spot those capybara on the side of the road? Yeah, uh, our uh, overlander space camping is uh, coming up in two miles. Yes. So we really getting there. Oh, <gasps> there's Capybara. Uh, oh my God. We missed like a million of them before we <laughs> yes. actually saw them. It's true. Where are you? Wow, it looks picturesque here. Yeah, look at that. That is a ride. And that is a lake. <laughs> That's a lake. <laughs> and those are mountains. And this is the lake that Butch Cassidy took. He crossed over this lake to reach Chile on the other side. And he was not attacked by Nahuelito. Maybe he was. Maybe he killed it. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit of a badass. That could have been true.
We just stopped for a break in front of this motorcycle rent shop. The owner here says that the next bit is called the Seven Lakes Road and is really beautiful. So that's really cool. Good trip. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Wow, yes, this is a pretty epic part of Argentina here. The lakes are just massive. We're talking seven pretty big lakes, yeah. So it's 6.30 now and we have done 200 miles. So we try to push on for another 50 miles. Yeah, and that'll put us a quarter of the way to Santiago. So that'll be mission accomplished for the day. Yes. <laughs> a horse on the road. Oh <laughs> no. Oh Two no. horses. What is he doing? Is he peeing? Oh no, he's just scratching his... Oh! <laughs> Beautiful! Hello! Hello! <laughs> oh, that's so cute! Ooh. <laughs> it's a bit twisty. This is a twisty one. Yeah, twisty and turny. So apparently there's a wild camp coming up in about 20 miles and this place we are going to check out oh here's some bikers hello mm -hmm. yeah we were trying to stop around the 250 mark and on i overlander there was like two really nice wild camps listed both of them on rivers one of them was a little bit earlier and then one of them was much later and we decided to go for the earlier one <laughs> <laughs> so we have to push on tomorrow a little bit more yeah but, wow that's nice with the trees here on the side Epic! I think that the first camp will put us at about 230 for the day, so it's not too bad. Uh, we should be able to pick that up tomorrow and still keep on track. All right, let's go see what we can find. Perfect. It's a spot right down there by the river. It's pretty nice. Just got to go down this little ramp. Oh, sandy ramp. Okay. Yes, have a look at this some space for the tents and then down here got ourselves a little river nice hola buenos dias cool all right let's make ourselves a nice camp then good evening guys we made it happy and alive of course we did and this is a really beautiful little camp we've got here. We're just cooking up some dinner. We've got Yew! some leftovers. Potatoes and fake mints. <laughs> like a bolognese sauce. Yeah, they make some really, really good meat substitutes. Texturized soy protein. Uh, yeah, it's really like mints. So we bought a whole load of packets of those because they're also dry. So you just like add water to them and then cook them up and they're really tasty substitute to mints. And um, Nikos has his place, his palace here, and he's cooking up some food as well. What have you got? Risotto. Risotto with vegetables. Um, so we're gonna share some risotto, some of the, our stuff, and just have a really nice dinner tonight. Excited? <laughs> cool. Yes, so unfortunately we didn't reach our goal for today. We just did 230 miles, so we have to push on tomorrow a little bit more. <laughs> but anyway, 230 miles is sort of 250, so that's all gravy. <laughs> Close enough, we'll make it up tomorrow. And just a quick reminder, guys, that our YouTube membership program is open. Members get live Q&As and early access to episodes. So if you're interested in joining our channel and supporting our journey, then click the join button below this video. And that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time.